Um, uh, first, we don't intend to let another seven days or another few days pass without there being some sort of action and solidarity with the militants and revolutionaries in Greece. Yeah. So we are calling for something Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at the Greek consulate in solidarity with our brothers and sisters struggling and fighting in Greece. Um, I think that's, that's, it's important, not only is it in Greece, but it's spreading throughout Europe. Hopefully it will reach the shores of North America. Um, <clears throat> but I, um, first in, in Chicago, it's, you know, it's, it's um, the fact that it happened in this period that workers decided to take, and, and first of all, I think that we, we the, the workers in, at the Republic, windows and doors, you know, only two years ago there were 700 workers working there uh, before the land, the space was sold to W.M. Wrigley. Um, and that was in 2006. Now there's about 260, somewhere around 300, primarily 80% Latino, but um, there also is about maybe five, maybe as many as, many as 10% that are, that are black. Uh, African American as well as being from the Caribbean um, <clears throat> and Latin America. And, and that's an important thing to, to point out um, because you, what you, in being inside the factory, you had um, very multinational support for the workers that, were, that had occupied the factory from all over Chicago, from all over the country, but from all over Chicago, from the black community, Latino community, um, white workers, different unions were there. Um, so the fact, it was a magnificent thing to be able to see in this, this particular period. And I would expect, or at least I would hope, we would hope that it's gonna happen more often especially with our auto, auto worker brothers and sisters who are under the gun right now. <clears throat> um, but it's, it's, it's difficult to know exactly what's going to happen since the, um, since the um, settlement has been released. But I would like to talk about primarily about the actual demonstration that occurred on uh, Wednesday. And it was, it was, it, it's hard to, you know, at, at a certain point, we were confined in one particular area in front of the, the, the building where the bank is. But the crowd began to swell so big that it stretched around two blocks around that. People kept marching around the two different blocks. So it was quite a huge demonstration. And there was barely any room to move unless people in front of you were moving. Otherwise, you just had to wait um, because the sidewalks were full. And of course, the pig, they were out in full. Um, fortunately, they didn't go hog wild, but they had a lot of <clears throat> they had a lot of cops who weren't who were um, aggressive in a sense that they were not they were they were they were making sure it didn't spill out into the streets, which it could have easily have done. Um, that was the main drag that went in front of the um, the building, um, but it, primarily the the demonstration stayed on the streets. I mean, stayed on the, on the sidewalks. But it was the demonstration was very multinational, and you had speakers um, that spoke about a lot of different issues, but one that I remember in particular was a, was a brother who spoke about um, an eviction, evictions that are occurring in a community called Austin, or is it Austin? Yeah. A community called Austin, and the, the foreclosures that people were facing, and how they are trying to organize to fight against that. So they were linking the struggles. Um, and th there were two different, there was also a, our comrades were able to speak at another sort of a, there, there was a main rally where many of the official dem of, the, of the different unions spoke and then there was another rally um, after the, the speakers that spoke at the main rally where a few of our comrades spoke, uh, Dave Saul, uh, Ignacio Menenses uh, spoke from the point of view of being um, uh, trade union workers as well. Um, and it, it got a great deal of support. I mean, by the time that, of course it was during, it was during 12 o'clock noon, so people had come during their lunch break. So, you know, around 12.45, 1 o'clock, people had to go back to work. But even as we left the rally, which was somewhere close to 2 o'clock, there were still a lot of youth that were there chanting. Um, 
with with signs and with uh, being on buckets and things of that nature. But it, it was it was a magnificent thing to be able to see, and and the um, the outpouring from the community, um, the fact that you know the workers that were there didn't they didn't go hungry. <laughs> You know, they didn't have to worry about that because every day people were bringing in food and water and things of that nature. Um, there were a lot of donations sent in. There was uh, quite a, you know, a, a substantial amount that is going to be put into a fund, uh, which may be used to, um, I mean, it, it's hard to say exactly what's going to happen, but there are talks that it, that money in that fund may be used to assert workers' control over the factory. Um, in order for that to happen, it would have to be worker community control, especially with the type of industry that um, uh, that these workers, the, the product that they produced in this this uh, economic crisis, when people aren't um, buying any homes or um, adding adding anything onto the homes that they might own. But I think that one of the most important things is the way that we the way that we were able to orient ourselves to this, to what happened. And no matter what happens, whenever there's, whenever there's movement, even if there's something major we're planning, we're able to shift gears and orient ourselves to that struggle as it happens. And, you know, it, it was one of these things where this, we found out about this Friday and began talking about what we were going to do about it and were able to pull together a demonstration for that Wednesday. It was very, very helpful that we were able to do that. And the fact that that the party was the first, organi first left organization to get out there and call for s solidarity and support for the workers at Republic Windows and Doors says quite a lot that we were able to uh, change gears that quickly and that we were able to organize not just Sharon and myself to go there, but comrades from Cleveland, fist comrades were able to get there, three of them. who drove, you know, during the day and then became, joined the, help organize, actually drove during the night, help make the placards and the banner. Um, of course, we had been doing that all night, the night yeah. before, <laughs> going to Kinko's and things of that nature. Um, but they drove through the night, helped assemble the, the uh, placards, went to the rally, and then had to drive back home. There was only one driver. Uh, the comrades from Detroit, Detroit bought, I think, about six comrades and friends uh, that were able to get there and show solidarity. So we had a large, very militant, very spirited, very helpful contingent. And, you know, it, it's, it's very important. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that when the workers and, and GM and Chrysler and Ford start taking over the factories, that we'll have people there too and we'll orient ourselves to those workers. So wherever the workers are, wherever they occupy or take over what belongs to them, whether it's their homes or it's the factories or it's the store, wherever it is, I know that we'll be able to organize and show solidarity and support.